any time. Please tell us your name. Balamin Karina. Dawat Sering. His Holiness the Dalai Lama asked us to record your experiences so that we can share your memories with many generations of Tibetans, the Chinese, and the rest of the world. Your memories will help us to document the true history, culture, and beliefs of the Tibetan people. Do you give your permission for the Tibet Oral History Project to use this interview? Hmm. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for offering to share your story with us. During this interview, if you wish to take a break or stop at any time, please let me know. If you do not wish to answer a question or talk about something, let me know. If this interview was shown in Tibet or China, would this be a problem for you? Okay. We are honored to record your story and appreciate your participation in this project. Yes. Can you please tell me how old you are and where you were born? So, uh, I'm 77 years old. <coughs> I was born in Jole Tegulung in Kongra. Mm. And what is Jole Tegulung? How is that a village? And how many families were living there at the around the time you were a child? ปูชุนจีชิเบกกับละรัวอ่าจอเลเตกุลุงดีคันเดดะบุจอเรทรงเซ็ตชุนจีเรชุบุเรทรงซีเมซอนจ๋าเซยอะเดเวอะราวด์
So the land that we cultivated belonged to us and uh, ours was a middle class family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and as a young child, uh, or even you know eight, nine, ten, what was your daily life like? What kind of chores or activities did you do? So even as a child, uh, we were taken to the fields uh, to work, and uh, there were no schools at all. And was the um, how many children were in your family, and where were you in that order? Uh, <coughs> I had three siblings and I was the oldest among the children. Can you tell us about what kind of work did you do in the fields as a child? So um uh, we were taken to the fields to you know uh, with the you weeded out the weeds uh, using a hoe and uh, then also to graze the sheep and goats. Oh, how many sheep and goats did your family have? About 40, of, 40 to 50 uh, sheep and goats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you, uh, Paula, describe if you went out your door, what would we see? Can you give us a picture of your village and of your home and the scenery around it? Chin Chu. So um, there were mountains all around uh, with mm. forests, mm. and there were also pastures, and uh, um, you could see the uh, pines and fir trees growing there, mm. and there were also rivers. Mm. Mm. It sounds very beautiful. Did you have time to ever go and play as a youngster, or? Uh, you know, go hiking in the forest. Such a big kind of 
Yes, we went up the mountains a lot, and there were forests and there were grasslands, and we took the animals to graze there, but not to play. There was no time to play. Did what kind of animals did you see in the forest that you can remember? Ini tanah China di ni ialah semjen coba pergi yerwa. Tanjat pergi tu kan? Jik semjen kari kari eh eh segi tu eh China kan lah ya. China lah. Rida semjen. Rida semjen, syawai yeri, tni lai yeri, tni zi semjen, tni dua ati zi yeri. Or semjen rada hong lo yeri. On ziti shibu sigiri. Ale sigi sigiri. Sigiri. Thomanchi le nga shinapo le ratsu khanro. Ma lo unre ralo sungu to ma diyame no. Bura zigi si chane. Tindri rita. So in the forest there were deer and then there was a musk deer. And leopards, and uh, the leopards attacked uh, the goats and sheep. And uh, one day, you know, when I went to graze my goats and sheep, uh, I had only three left when I came home. The rest were killed by uh, the leopard. Oh, how many went with you originally? So, initially there were 15 sheep, and then except for three, the rest were killed. Oh my goodness. Did you, did you see the leopard killing the sheep? Then he said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Yes, I saw the leopard killing the sheep, and it was very scary. And I started crying and ran home. How old were you when that happened? I'm going to go to the house. Uh, I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Did, was there any way that you could scare off the leopard, like with a slingshot or make a noise or anything? Look, no. no, nobody dared do that <coughs> because if you went towards the leopard, it could attack you. It yeah. was very scary. Yeah. Uh, how far away were you when you saw the leopard killing the sheep? The sheep did look very close. Yeah. But the tar in the air is tar in the air. 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 Ragaroha, ral minta dengan tinggi cedi kanwa. Ral mana roha? Ral pas zir cedi kanwa. Ra kongga, ralo kongga, mer ral ya nusha roha. So um, it was as far away as the camp number three from here, and it was all on the mountain because the goats and sheep always graze on the mountains. I see. So you could see them in the distance. Right, from a distance. Why would, was it only one, why would one leopard kill 12 sheep? Uh, I saw only one leopard killing. Uh, killing yes. mm -hmm. 12, because you said you had took 15 yeah. and only three came home. Mm -hmm. So would a leopard kill that many? Uh, uh, that, 
当不要路错个配对个呢路穷个有了啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个有啊穷个
So the next day, uh, my parents <coughs> took uh, another person with me and to that particular spot. And there we found that uh, most of the uh, carcasses had been consumed. And uh, uh, some the leopards ha leopard had uh, dug up the ground and, and uh, hidden the um, carcass. And there was nothing left to take back home. Mm. Were you scared to go up and do uh, care for your sheep in the future? So from then, you know, I used to place <coughs> my goats and sheep with uh, others. Uh -huh. So there would be like uh, five to six other children like me. <laughs> Sounds like a much safer thing to do. <laughs> Yeah. Were, were um, ad adult men, Tibetan men, were they ever allowed to go up and hunt leopards or other wild animals, you know, like the deer? Uh, uh, were they allowed to do that by the city or the government or the village? No, they, the, you were not allowed to hunt there. Why, why do you think they had that regulation? So, um, there was a law in our region uh, which was passed by our leaders which said that you, know, you could not hunt wild animals. Do you, do you have any idea what would be the, the reasoning or the, the belief behind that regulation? Uh, so that was uh, because we had our natural protect protective deities of the land. Mm -hmm. So that's why we could not kill um, the wild animals. Okay. Can, uh, can you uh, name some of those natural protective deities of the land? The name of the deity of our land was the Pisang Shangmo. Can you tell me something about Pisang Shangmo? So that was the you know deity of our land and there's nothing more to say about it. And, uh, on um, the 15th and the 30th days of the lunar calendar, we went up the mountain and uh, made incense offerings mm -hmm. to the deity. Okay. Uh, and with the importance of having the deity and making offerings was so that the deity would protect 
<coughs> the mountain and the animals and the people it, it was that the uh, the hope of the prayers So the location of our village was a uh, you know such that we were surrounded by mountains mm. and right in the center where the plain ground and there was a road right uh, through the uh, village. Mm. So it would be very important to have protective deities in the mountains because uh, you are you were very vulnerable mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Chu <coughs> <coughs> the mountain surrounded the village. There was one <coughs> point where uh, there was a sort of an opening where there was no mountain. So on that part, you know, because there was no mountain, a stupa had been constructed there. Oh. Mm -hmm. was, um, I, I would just like to know if you could d tell me about the deity of your mountain. Was it a male or female deity? Uh, and was it and and what would it look like if we saw a picture of this deity? And the Yula Laya Jiorwala. Yula Laya di ta po mo kare na. Mo injer. Ani chikke ngajuk ta par dawe chikte abe yena chik khande dawe jiorre. Re khana re. Re ne ne zo zo chimu thi yore. Tang shi yu sa dang te ni shi na shi wu yore. Te yi re chimu yore. So the deity must be female. Uh, the deity was the mountains that were there. You know, mountains, forest, and pine trees. So those were our deity. Mm. Yes, was the mountain itself. Yes, I see. Do you know what when the Chinese came into your area? Do you know what happened to the mountains and the conditions of the animals and the forest? So, um, my relatives who came here told me that uh, the <coughs> forests have been left untouched, mm -hmm. but uh, the wild animals uh, were killed. Mm. How were they killed? Mm. 
Uh, perhaps they used guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, did you remain a, a farmer <coughs> and a sheep herder your whole life, or was there some changes that happened when you got <coughs> a little older? Ah, Tony so then uh, when uh, we were about 15 to 16, uh, then many uh, boys, you know, went up the mountain and we had to cut a wood. Um, in India, you see that the uh, roofing is made yeah. of tiles, but in our region, we used bamboo uh, boards. Mm. Bamboo. So we, we uh, use sorry, uh, wooden boards, not oh. bamboo. Okay. Uh, and what did you do with the wood? And shing the karichi, shing tuka ching rua, and shing the karichi are. Shing pang sang ni jo hai yore, pang le sang ya. Nindre, nindre tong se hai yore. So the wood was, uh, you know, made in, cut into boards and it was used as a roof for the houses. Oh. That sounds like roofing some material. roofing mm. material. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a task that was given to um, teenagers to do. Was there any other a job that you had to do when you were 15, 16, 17? So there wasn't uh, in many other tasks, but uh, farming was the major. <coughs> How did you? Uh, how did you cut those trees down? Could you tell us a little bit about that process and how many people it took to cut a tree and bring it down? And, and did you make it into boards in the village or work up in the mountains? Oh, okay. Jagatnoa, so the um, <coughs> trees were cut uh, using uh, axes. <coughs> uh, two people did the cutting, one from, you know, each uh, from two sides, and, um, mm. and then the uh, log was measured. Uh, whether you want a measurement of uh, length of five feet or four feet, and then it was cut. And then it was made into boards Ooh. and left mm. there on the mountain for a week. And later, uh, we went with horses and mules to uh, transport them to the village. Mm. What was the point of leaving it there for a week? Uh, 
And and when you brought the logs down, what what happened to them? Did people buy them, or were they for your own family? And where did they uh, use them in building? ขมบัจจอขมบัจจอฉันนอนเรจากากินนอนชินนี่จีจีเทียบปองเลยจันนี่เป็นเรชินซินนี่จอกเลยแต่นี่ทุลปองเลยจอกเลยสาลอยาท
they call. So then, um, <coughs> the, around the age of 1920, I went uh, to Lhasa to trade. Uh, in our village, uh, there were 100 families, and from the 100, only five were engaged in trade. Oh, so you went to trade. Why did you pick that profession? So the um, main trading uh, goods was uh, the one called uh, uh, round tea, round shaped tea. Any? Drink Koronchinua, Jahage Koron and Duduchinua, what the Yakron Sarai Hassal Tongri? Any? Hassa? Oh, Kongayal Hassakun. Yahane? My birdie. So we uh, took this uh, round shaped <coughs> tea and then uh, uh, brown uh, sugar blocks uh, from China and all these were taken to Lhasa. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us um, how did you learn how to do trade? Did, did you join with other people or with your father? And, and uh, where did you... First of all, let's at, let's understand that part. How did you learn the trade? That song gave me the condition be na pala zani shem be na ya mi shem ba zani shem be na kandi na. That mi shem al mi ta de 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 de. He learned to trade by watching other people do it. Observing them, I see. So if you were around twenty, uh, you're born in nineteen thirty six. And you do this today around 1920. The year is around 1956. And you live in Kham. And you're going to China. Uh, wh how, where, how far away from your village is the place you go to do the trade? And what is the name of the place? So the city was called Ho Chin and uh, it took uh, four days from my village. Mm. How many people went with you, and did you take any animals with you? And what did you take there to trade to get the goods you wanted? Uh, so there would be about uh, five people going together on the trade mission and we drove mules <coughs> and uh, uh, the um, goods that we took uh, to sell at Ho Chin was a medicinal plant. It, it's called a uh, um, Ah, karsa. It's called Idi Pemo and it's a um, white bulb which looks like garlic mm -hmm. and uh, 
if you take two bags, two sacks of idipemu, uh, you would get 20 sacks of round shaped brick tea. Two bags or two sacks? Two sacks of uh, idipemu. 20 sacks, uh, sacks of, of uh, round shaped uh, oh. brick tea. What, what was this medicine used for? Uh, I think uh, this medicine is helpful for urinary tract infection and many other uh, problems. Did, did the uh, people in your village use this plant for medicinal purposes or only the Chinese knew about it? Uh, mainly the Chinese used it. But in our village, if someone uh, got ill, uh, he will, you know, grind the garlic-like uh, thing and then uh, take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You said it took uh, to Hoshin four days. Can you describe the journey? Was it, was it very difficult or easy? Uh, was there any danger along the way? What was it like for you and your... Uh, Four other people that went with you. The Hotin La Pedugane, Nimashi Gordido, Shimuka, Nimashi Gordugane, the Nimashi Budi, the Lam Laya, the Mishing at your Rasmas Yam to Piggy or and then Lamga Nala Chick and Yanga Yore, Kandi Kandi or Lam Nikai or Mari. Palagi, Payune, Tongsebne, Hochin, La Pedi, Lamga, La Cande, Cande, Tavichiarita. Longa de Yamin Longapora Zutari Mura Longa Zutari. In a Gessinje, ten piggy or on a singe ten worry. So there was uh, no danger on the journey to Hochin, and the Chinese had already constructed a roads then. Oh, mm. so you could go mm -hmm. on the roads. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and you mentioned the Chinese now. Were the Chinese also in your village at the time when you decided to do this trade? Were they in your area? That's and what were they doing? There were no Chinese in our village. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so how did you know about the city and where to, where to do this trade? And, and can you tell us about what, what the city looked like when you saw it? So um, in my village, when I was about 20 years old, there were, you know, traders who were 50, 40, 50, mm. and... Uh, you know, I joined up with them, and then they were the ones that helped me sell. I see, I see. So you became part of the caravan that went in into uh, that area in China. This the mission by Nyamdoli, Chalapa Juni, and Nyamdoli Nyamdoli Chene Pever. Oh, yes, Nyamdoli Nyamdoli Nyamdoli. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so could you tell the difference between being in Tibet or Kham? And then being in China, was there any? What were the things that seemed different from from your village to the place that you uh, traded? Ta pala kam la shudeyor wa kam lumbada shudeyor ganan dinema chenita 
ตะจะซะชิจุงยอเรมีมังยอเรถ้าหยาร so compared to uh, the people in uh, Ho Chin, the Tibetans were uh, poorer and uh, there were uh, many uh, rich Chinese families there and the city was big like uh, the cities in India. Mm. Mm. Uh, were the uh, you know what were some of the differences that made it look like a a, a big city in India? Was it the shops or the food or the clothing? What can you describe? Because we're talking about 1956 Ho Chi Minh. What did it look like? I know it's different than your village, but. Was there electricity, cars, trucks? Um, did you see many poor people? Uh, was it were there policemen or military there? Get, paint me a picture. Ta ho chin ki kaisa lapthe tu kane roa. Ta chida ki ta bhogi saje chile ta manja yor roa. Ine manja adi khare re jik chonga manga tuve mi dunju khala sata thuglo khanta ani gadi moja lo yeme. ตาจิกเอ่อตามังมีอยู่เรปุลิสอยู่เรตักมันจ๋าดิขาริตะวิจิกมันจ๋าวิจิเอซีอยู่น่ะปะลากิอือมันจ๋าวิจิเชวยอ
and uh, if you were from uh, the area of Chibo <coughs> or uh, you know towards Hasa side, then you were in Tibet and would have to pay a toll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you have to pay if you were considered part of China? Did you have to pay any taxes? Did your family have to? Your village? Then, Gami Ganagi Kungdoli is Labi Nodwala. Any um Palagi Tong Sep Nalia, that's so soon Nami, but Dota Nami Shamba Dunzugiti, Chick Ted or Stego Yana Ganalia. Yanan Tin is Trugger. Te no Sai is Satin to Trugger. Sai Tinch San Matsu Jahala Yamachal Mumba Jogunua, Longo Longo Mumba Jogunua. Long <laughs> Uh, we had to pay a land tax, but there were no uh, tax on uh, animals or people, and uh, the land tax depended upon the, uh, the um, size of the plot a family owned. And the size of the plot was measured by the number of days it took to plow a plot uh, using bullocks. So a family might, you know, take six or seven days to plow their plots, and that would be like uh, in India, you would say the family owned five to ten acres. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned something that. If, if you were from your district, you could come and go very easily. Uh, what were the districts in Tibet that were not that were considered another country other than China? And, and then what was the procedure to go into China from those other areas? ตาอันดาปาลานชูเซกีซาเจจิออร์วาตาดุนซูเกมีคุงโตจานากีคุงโตดอสซิกีออร์วาอาเซกีตาเอเกนาคุงโตมายินบะเพกีซาเจจิออ
so Lhozong is, you know, after you have passed a Kongo Jamda. Okay. Yeah. But not near Lhasa. Not near Lhasa, I see. Mm -hmm. And um, when you when you went uh, to this to, to do your trade in China, did in this uh, city, did, how were you were you treated you know, like anybody who lived there or were you considered uh, different or was there any friend was were people friendly to you? What was that like? You were treated as equal, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing mm -hmm. uh, different. Right. And then when you, uh, you, you took the, uh, the plants, for the medicinal plants, to Hoshin, then you got the sugar and the tea, and then did you go to Lhasa from Lhasa. there? Yes. And, and how long did that journey take? Or did you come home first? I'm trying to... ตันตาสุสุลุงบานเนตันเมนซะดิน้ําพิกิยอรวามเมนซะดิมาโฮชินละน้ําพิกิยอรวามมาเกเนยาตะจิกพุรัมตาชาดุนซุนน้ําพิ
I started at uh, at the age of 18 mm-hmm. and uh, when I was 20 <coughs> I uh, uh, stayed in Lhasa and then traded uh, you know from between India and Lhasa. Oh, I mm. see. Okay. So uh, if you started at 18 uh, that would be fi- so 1954 mm-hmm. you started trading and uh, you're 18, but then in 1956, you stayed in Lhasa and started trading with India. What things did you take from Lhasa to India? Lhasa ne jagala pa chongso kari kari nam pigyo jo. Lhasa ne jagala chong chongso nyongo mare chongba kongga kalimpol di eroa kalimpol ne chongba ch dalak. Dalaki <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, one didn't have to buy any goods. I was engaged, you know, in a transportation uh, for the merchants that lived in Kalimpong and took their uh, goods from Kalimpong to Pari on mules. And then they paid us a uh, uh, hundred rupees for every uh, load a mule carried. Oh. I see. So you were engaged in transportation mm. more than actual trade. So this is because the Chongle Rang Mine, but did it do work as a Jala Pazu one. Yes, transportation. Mm-hmm. Right. But can you tell us what were you must have had some idea? What were the things that they were transporting from Kalimpong to Pari, and then did and then also did you go up to Lhasa or only to Pari? ता <laughs> Yeah, so there were many different types of goods <coughs> uh, like uh, shoes, sugar, rice, milk, and then there was also um, petrol. And uh, these were carried only up till Pari, mm-hmm. uh, for which we were paid a hundred rupees per mule. Mm-hmm. And, and then did you also do any trade from Pari? As even as a transporter from Pari to Lhasa? The Pari in Lhasa is not going to be able to do it. Oh, it's not going to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I did uh, uh, go twice, but okay. uh, not more mm. than that. Not more than that, uh huh. And uh, uh, so, what kind, Paolo, what kind of things, why did you like? Being a transporter and and moving goods back and forth, what was was there something about that um, that job that you liked? Uh, can you tell us about that? And can you tell us what was challenging or hard about it? What was rewarding about it? Tapalagi and chala phazu onde nang shuerwa. Ah, thadi mangbo peyore. Thad lega dila ya chale dila ni palagi tijik. No, I did find it difficult and you know I, I enjoyed you know transporting the 
uh, you know, goods from place to place. Mm -hmm. Were there certain months of the year that you did the transporting from uh, uh, Pari to Kalimpong, or was it just whenever you got a job? ตาพาดในกาลิมปงลาตาจาลาดินยาพาดสู่นําพิกิยอรวาลาเรนบิจิกเอ่อโลจิกนาลายาทุจุจิกเอ่อซีกุกุยนายาจาลาคัตติราน
Ah, uh, I did and went. Oh, and why did mm. you want to go? And I painted the Bacarichini Chumina. Then, 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 so um, then I thought, you know, because uh, the Chinese were uh, stopping all the people from, uh, you know, traveling at Tomo, and uh, it uh, seemed useless to remain in India, so I went to join. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So the Chinese were stopping everyone at uh, this place called uh, Tomo Chumi Tang, and then they were, you know, uh, asking for for documents, for permits to move, to travel. And we said, excuse me, to show permits to be able to travel in Tibet. In Tibet, Tomo. Yeah. How far was uh, Tomo Chumi Tang from? I don't know, Kalimpong or where is it? Tomo Chumi Tang, the Kalimpone Taring Luina. Uh, it's a four days uh, journey from uh, Kalimpong. Ah, oh, so it wouldn't be possible then mm. to go to Kalimpong mm. if if you were stopped oh. by the Chinese. Kalimpong paya yomarwa. This journey in by ina Kalimpong paya paya me biche. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Ani? <laughs> So we, the transporters and traders, had been issued a pass uh, from Lhasa, uh, which was valid for one year, to travel to India to trade and transport, mm -hmm. and this uh, travel permit had to be renewed every year. And when we reached Kalimpong, the Indians also issued us a permit to do trade there in Kalimpong. And then, you know, in Tomo, there was a Chinese office, and when we passed through Tomo, the um, officials there uh, wanted to see the passes, and, um, and that was in 1958. And then, from then, you know, they stopped people uh, from moving between Kalimpong and uh, Tibet at this point. And they returned the people from Tibet back and back to Tibet, and those from India back into India. You know, why do you, what do you think was, what was your understanding at that time about why the Chinese were trying to stop that flow of uh, trade between India and Tibet. Why, why, why did you think they were trying to do it when you were uh, going through that experience?
Churgon Ruti, Chichigan, some cotta, and you know, quay, Jerwa. The nature and not on January. So the Chinese uh, may have heard about the activities of the Chushigan Duke mm. in Tibet, uh -huh. and that's why you know they were doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you had, uh, you know, well, well, let me ask this. The Chushigandru wanted you to join, as uh, and all the traders. What were some of the uh, skills or the uh, assets that the traders would bring to the Chushigandru? The Chushigandru, he he got down there, right? He chomp up, chomp up, Chushigandru, na zu zu shows. Hmm. Oh, right. He chomp up, like that. The Chushigandru, na la zu ya ge. He just ge. Join down, drop it, carry your ina. Man, chomp up, da chomp up, Andrew. The organizer of the Chushigan Duke was called Andrew Kumbutashi and he was a businessman. And uh, that's why, you know, he believed that uh, he could gather all the traders, and he did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what, what skills do you think a trader would bring to joining the Chushi Gandruk? What, what skills did you have? That's a sir, Jacob That was, uh, you know, because we wanted to take back our country uh, from the Chinese uh, who had you know, barred monks from living in the monastery and people from doing trade. Ah, oh, okay. Was it helpful that you spoke Chinese? I didn't know Chinese. Mm. Oh, you didn't know mm. it? Mm. Oh. Even though you did many mm. trade missions mm. to China, huh? Uh, so these are the language <coughs> that's spoken in uh, the city where I went to trade, mm. and the um, you know the other Chinese that mm. uh, they were different. They were, uh, the Chinese that was spoken in the uh, city that I went was called the Jokke. Jokke. Ah, and you spoke Jokke. Mm. And Jokke can you know? Jokke and Saki, Tongi tizi tizi shige. A little of Jokke. Uh. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So, can you tell us about your experiences with the Chushi Gandruk when you were um, enlisted by them? Mm. Dejoyakasa, <laughs> Some 
After I joined the Chujigandu, <coughs> there was one encounter at the place called Ralung. At that time, we were staying at uh, Nangatze, and uh, we could not, you know, withstand the Chinese. And uh, at that at that <coughs> time, Hasa was lost, and uh, so we fled towards uh, Hora uh, Sangha Kutok, and then onwards to Bhutan, where we were stopped for a month. And then one day, His Holiness asked them to let us go, and then we were let off. Mm. So your career in the Chushigandru was about a year or a few months. And Chushigandru nali ya dawa kaje shui na logic shui na. Na wa trust di. Ah, namganze. Ah, namganze. So. I was there in Chushigandu for six months. Six no, months. No, six about months. six months. Mm -hmm. Okay, about six months. How did you feel about leaving Tibet, uh, the Tibet that you knew? I felt disappointed. <laughs> so it was uh, sad uh, because we had lost our country. Mm -hmm. However, I was happy when I heard that uh, His Holiness had reached India. Mm. So, Paula, what kind of what kind of wishes do you have for Tibet now? What do you hope will happen? So we we hoped at that time that uh, we would be four to five months in mm -hmm. India and then we'll go back to Tibet. Mm -hmm. uh. So what do you hope now? Mm. I feel that um, His Holiness should, you know, be able to go back to Tibet mm -hmm. before he passes away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Dawa, uh, we appreciate your story and, and thank you for sharing some aspects of uh, Tibetan history and, and trade experiences that we uh, you know, were, were interested in learning about. And uh, I want to just repeat my uh, final question and ask one more time if this uh, interview was shown in Tibet or Ch China, would this be a problem for you? I have no problem. We are honored to record your story and appreciate your participation in this project. Thank you.